Thank you very much. Uh, today, the Local Government Committee will be considering House Bill 1074, introduced by Speaker Terzai. Uh, Chairman Freeman, do you have any comments this no time? Comments. No comments. Uh, and we can go ahead and start with the speaker at this point if you want to give us an explanation of the bill. Yes. Yes. I'm a lifelong resident of Alameda. Uh, my mom and dad uh, were immigrants uh, from, uh, they themselves were born in the United States, but their parents were from Hungary and Ireland, respectively. And uh, my wife Lydia, as many of you know, uh, her mom's actually from Italy, she's from Italy, and her mom's from Italy, so her uh, father is an Italian American, he's a We've grown up in Alameda County our lives. We're raising our family in Alameda My district is fully in Alameda fully in Alameda and um, we care deeply about the regional culture. The airport, of course, is a, a regional asset. It, it serves not merely the Alameda economy. It actually serves all of southwestern Pennsylvania, to be honest with you, some of North Pennsylvania. Uh, and in addition to uh, traffic from Ohio and West Virginia around our, our uh, community. In Allegheny County, um, the airport was a uh, That airport came upon some difficulty financially. And uh, why? Back in uh, 2007 when we did the first gaming legislation, the, the, bond, the bonds for that particular airport were so significant, were so significant, and, and the business was not enough with respect to the payment of those particular bonds. No other airport has done this, by the way. Only our airport, our airport authority, has done this. They came in the gaming legislation of 2007. They came and they asked for $150 million out of the gaming legislation, which was passed and utilized over um, the 10 years. Those bonds were paid off. In the last gaming expansion bill of 2017. Some of you were here, not everybody, but some of you were here. The $12.4 million funding stream without, a, without an end date, without a cap, was passed by this body and the Senate and signed into law. $12.4 million annually in state tax dollars coming from the gaming legislation flows into the greater Pittsburgh airport through the airport authority. Understand there's no other airport in the state that has those dollars, none. Only the Pittsburgh airport, 12.4 million annually. In addition, there are significant millions of dollars that have gone in capital monies to the Pittsburgh airport. There are other capital monies that have gone to other airports, but not, not like the Pittsburgh airport. Most recently, six million in 2019 this year in business in our sites money, 
which is the CFA approved project, and four million in, in the redevelopment uh, assistance capital project, the RACP, which is determined by the governor. So four million in RCAP, that's our acronym for it, and six million in business in our sites. Just this year, folks. Now, with respect to that board, with respect to that, that particular board, they are all chosen by the county executive, all nine of them. I have invited folks to take a look at that particular board. I've invited folks to see whether or not everybody actually resides in Allegheny County year round, if even a majority of the time on that board. I'd invite each of you to do that inquiry yourselves. I would argue to you that not everybody does. In addition, so there was 150 million from Act 53 of 2007 that fully expended, came to an end. Now 12.4 million in the new gaming legislation. And in terms of capital projects from 2004 to the current time, it's been about 67 million in capital monies, whether it be R RCAP, DCED, multimodal, PennDOT capital grants, money comes out of PennDOT. That's quite a significant amount of money coming from state taxpayers. Those state tax dollars, every one of us has, a, I know some are new members, so I apologize, but for those in the past, in terms of authorizing the legislation overall with respect to some of these projects, because some of them are decided by the governor. But, but the governor just doesn't get to give away money. The governor only gets to give away money if, he's been, if he or she has been authorized to do that. So this is all pursuant to legislation that has been passed by the House of Representatives at some point and the Senate and signed into law by some governor. The most recent, of course, being this 12.4 million stream of money which is for operating money. Now, also just as a, a note, if you look at the 2019 Authority Capital Budget Projections narratives, this is money that has not yet been given out. 573,000 is expected to come from PennDOT for rehabilitation and placement projects. That is in the county's own financial statements. That's not, we're not coming up with that. We're just reading that in the county's financial statements. Now, back in um, 2013, with respect to the uh, Pittsburgh Port Authority, yes, the Port Authority does receive a higher percentage of its monies, a higher percentage of its monies from the state. It's about 60% of their operating budget. Keep in mind, many of you are on SEPTA. You know that there are, appointees from the various counties on SEPTA. And there are, are appointees on SEPTA from the legislature. As majority leader, I had an appointment. Not as speaker, I, did not, I do not. But as majority leader, I had an appointment. And I, I believe the Democratic leader has an appoint, appointee on SEPTA too, as do the two Senate leaders as well. What we did to, to somewhat mirror uh, what was taking place with SEPTA Back in 2013, the bill originated in the Senate, not in the House, the bill originated in the Senate, was a bill that added five new members to the Pittsburgh Port Authority Board, and um, one was chosen by the governor, and then one by each of the caucus leaders. House Democrats, House Republicans, Senate Democrats, Senate Republicans. So we had language. It was approved in the House, by the way, 203 to nothing. 203 to nothing, and it's support, bipartisan support all across the board. There was an amendment that was placed into there by Representative John Marr, who at the time was a Republican from the South Hills, and he did have this language that two members could table legislation. That is in law. It passed 203 to nothing. Senator Jay Costa voted for the bill when it left the Senate, and he voted for the bill when it went back to the Senate. He supported it both times. We just mirrored the language, we mirrored the language for the airport authority. True, it is not the same percentage that was brought to the table uh, in the port authority that's coming from the state, 
but keep in mind this is the only airport authority that's getting operating budget money and we didn't want to be disrespectful of the model that was already on the table the paradigm that's already there i've had members suggest well why don't you make it two out of nine if somebody wants to file an amendment to make a two out of nine and, and to tell us how they want to pick those two i'm perfectly open to that we just took a model and used the best model we could the key thing about this model is, is you can't say that you're providing an advantage to one party or, or the other, although I think a system of checks and balances is always good. One party rule is not very helpful in China, Venezuela, and or any place in the, in the United States. I think it's a system of checks and balances is a, is a good thing. And by picking the model we did, we made it clear that at least with the present governor, three of the appointees would come from the Democratic Party, in addition to the eight of the nine that would continue to be picked by the county executive, and two would come from the Republican Party. So we have a House Democrat, a House Republican, a Senate Democrat, a Senate Republican, and the governors. All of the appointees have to be residents of Allegheny County, and they could be a member, by the way, but, but, it, but it does not have to be a member. The one thing that would change it, it, is, is, because this is what we did in the Port Authority bill, and it was not my language, by the way, it was not, not it came over from the Senate, uh, but the language was is that the governor could pick somebody who wasn't necessarily from Allegheny County, so we just used the same language. Now, with respect to the tabling legislation, I d my understanding is it has never been used ever by the Port Authority Board. I, I don't think it's necessary. When the staff was given direction to use that model, they just incorporated that language. Chairman Mao is going to offer an amendment to remove the two-member tabling. We don't, we don't need it, and I do apologize. The direction was copy the Port Authority model. That, that's what I gave as a direction, because I remember it being done in 2013, and I knew we had unanimous support for it in the uh, House of Representatives. So uh, that will be, I believe, the first amendment that will be voted on. I'd ask everybody to vote for it unanimously uh, because it's never been used with respect to the Port Authority, and there's no need to have it here. And, and my, my, my apologies for having that included. As I said, I gave the direction, just copy the exact language that we did at the Port Authority. Um, with respect to the region, I, I, this isn't the only reason to contemplate it. But um, there is a significant proposal, and it could be a good proposal. I don't think it has been fully vetted uh, back in our region. The airport is, is really quite a good airport. I don't know if any of you have ever traveled into it. Y you know it has the longest runways um, east, I believe in the east, east of the Mississippi, the longest runways. A lot of the airport traffic that... Um, is uh, that can get bottled up in other jurisdictions. To be honest with you, Pittsburgh could accommodate it because it, it is really, uh, it, it was an airport that was designed and it was done by Democrat uh, commissioners at the time. We, we now have a county executive, but at the time, I think it was a board of three commissioners. Um, and, and just as an aside, I wanna just do one aside here in terms of working with county executives. Dan, uh, or Jim Roddy, um, was a Republican. Jim is one of my very close friends. He was followed by Dan Honorado, who actually beat him. Dan Honorado was one of my very close friends. He's actually a constituent. And I've worked on many issues um, with, with Jim and Dan. And then, of course, Rich is the newest uh, county executive, Rich Fitzgerald. Um, the issue is, is why wouldn't you want a system of checks and balances if you are receiving now state dollars for operating and capital monies? Now you could argue, okay, should it be commensurate with what the percentage is? If somebody has a better model on the floor, you know, give it to me. But I don't want to be accused of just making it the speaker and the Senate pro tem's choices to make it two out of ten out of nine. The model was is you'd have the governor have somebody, the Senate pro tem and the minority leader. And folks, you you may think that it's always one party. No, it switches. And, and also with respect to the House, the Speaker and the Democratic leader would have a, a vote, you know, an appointee to that, uh, to that board. 
it just seemed it seemed the fairest approach to make sure that to provide oversight with respect to those dollars and the capital dollars and this project which is 1.2 billion dollars to tear down part of the airport not to expand it to tear it down one part of the airport and put a new front door on the old project was one billion dollars and they always go up by the way money we look all of us know this the estimates always go up and is this airport going to have the same issues in the future like the past airport did when they ran into having too much debt who did they turn to guess who they turned to the state turns to, to all of us that's who they turned to the state and that's why we did the 150 million in the 2007 legislation it, it, and that money folks came off the top you know the gaming money has a variety of some of it's for property um rebate you know property tax rent and rebate right that's a part of it goes to reduce your your um your homestead value right that, that for every one of us the property tax dollars by and large the two main places it was supposed to go to property tax and rent rebate and to reduce your uh homestead exclusion dollars sometimes people forget that we do that you ought to take a look at it but this money of the 150 million came off the top that was money that did not go to property tax and rent rebate it came off the top just so that you understand that so so if if you take on this 1.2 billion dollar project and it's all appointees by just one person with no oversight from the state with respect to the dollars it's putting in capital or operating to me that just doesn't make sense i think there ought to be some representation and i think it's only fair and in, by no means am i loading it towards one party or the other the the paradigm we took was one that was designed to be fair and that was voted on unanimously by the house of representatives back in 2013 with respect to the pittsburgh port authority so that's why i've introduced the bill i support i do not know uh, chairman freeman i do not know all of your amendments I, i'm going to defer to the chair on that um and uh, i'm sure he he has looked at them in, in detail and, and can offer you know what makes a good government sense or not so i don't i don't have a particular perspective if you and the chairman have agreed upon them that's perfectly okay with me perfectly fine i and i definitely support removing the tabling provision for the reasons i've already stated with that I, I don't have anything further i'm glad to take questions if the chair wants me to or if the minority chair wants me to if you do not i'll get out of your way and let you get on Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that very in-depth uh, explanation of the bill. Hang right there for one minute. Let me get the bill called up, and then I'll ask for anybody that okay. may have questions. Yes. So uh, I would like to start Everybody by please. making a motion to call up the bill. Dave and Wendy. Okay, the bill is now called up. Does anyone have any questions for Speaker Terzai on his bill? Representative. Now, would this be on amendments first, or would this just be in a general sense of the bill? Dave, I think we, they would have to vote on the amendments first. That's what I thought. Well, yes, but, 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 but I'm, I'm glad, glad to take any questions general. you have, though. Yeah, so, while, yes. while the speaker's here. Okay, super. So he's tied down. And I should have said Representative Maloney. I apologize. That's all right. So I, uh, I really uh, somewhat intrigued by this, and your explanation was thorough, and I think you shed light on something that has been – Fascinating to me and, and, and a dismay at the same, and I think you know where I'm going. So um, I appreciate you bringing up the whole homestead thing. I mean, you know where, that, where I stand with that and the fact that we have allocated monies for things, but it doesn't go there anyway. So I guess the biggest question I have with respect to the great detail of how you explained all the monies, and I did some of the math here, and it's staggering. Um, and coming from construction, I, I couldn't help but giggle about the fact that it was tear down and put a new front door on. But um, is there a an accountability, somewhat of a data sheet, as to where this money has gone? Well, they, they haven't. You mean on the I 150 mean, million? Um, I, I don't have it in front of me, no, Representative I Maloney. You too, but I. But I, we have asked. Um, I, I mean, most of it went to pay down the debt. That, that's, that's where it went. 
So I guess for the 150 million, I should say. Yeah. Now, I, I'm not saying that it was earmarked there, but I'm sure that it's commensurate. You know, with the with the payment down of the debt, that money came in, coming right. in is is basically how it was used. Right. And, and I don't have any – I'm not here arguing that that money was not appropriately spent to reduce the debt because I, I, I believe it was. I understand. I, I, I just, believe it was. From my point of view and from construction background and understanding there was so much money, you know, it's just something that intrigues me as to why does it continue and how does it – why does it have to be so much year after year? So, And, and Representative Maloney, I just want to tell you that in – let me just – I, I want to just give you some awards – In 2018, J.D. Power & Associates ranked the airport the seventh best medium-sized airport in North America. In 2018, it was ranked the fifth best domestic airport in America by travel and leisure. In 2017, it won from an organization from Air Transport World Airport of the Year Award. It was the first United States airport to win the award. In 2017, um, and as you know, uh, some of the monies, the $12.4 million is, is used in part to try to attract, because it's an underutilized airport. The issue has never really been the airport. The issue is, is that it's underutilized. To a certain extent, many of you may remember U.S. Airways basically left it as a hub. It was built to be a U.S. Airways hub. U.S. Airways basically took its hub traffic to Philadelphia and to Charlotte. So there was less usage to pay for the cost of a facility that didn't have the same usage that it was designed for. Would it be fair to call it a taxpayer subsidized success? W without a doubt, it, it, it would not be in the good financial, the better financial position that it is without the 2007 legislation. Thank you. I appreciate it. Representative Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I appreciate uh, what you said in, in your comments, particularly about the fact that it would not be good that uh, the appointees would be all from the same party. Right. And uh, the, uh, the language as it's written now does leave the opportunity that potentially – all the members of the appointees could be from one party. Uh, if you look at the, the language, one in individual shall be appointed by the governor, one from the president, uh, the uh, president pro tem, the Senate, one by the minority leader of the Senate, one from uh, the Speaker of the House, and the other appointed by the minority leader of the House. But it is possible that there could be a, a minority lead, uh, leader from the minority party who is the Speaker. Uh, so my, my only point is I would agree with you that it's important to have uh, bipartisan representation in terms of appointees. The, and the only thing I would say, sir, that's such an aberration, and you can't list in the legislation. I, I would def, def, just – you can't put it has to be a Republican or a Democrat. Like you can't – No. Put, you can't put that in the legislation. I, I don't think you can. I know you are right that we did have uh, – with the – we did have one one session. You would hope that they would be fair. Uh, that was a that was a different session. Let me just say that uh, it it didn't <laughs> last beyond the one session. But but I just don't think you can put in there that um, it has to be a Republican or a Democrat. You just have to presume that you're going to have uh, one party in the speaker's office, one party in the minority leader's office. Right. My my. My point is just to ensure you, you wouldn't use Republican or Democrat, just uh, an amendatory language that would specify majority party, minority party, in both the House and, and the Senate. And I think it would be helpful just to clear that up in the event that that would happen. So I just want to offer that comment to you uh, just because I do believe in the principle that you outlined that it would be important that there be representation from both the majority and the minority uh, let in me, terms of appointees. Representative Miller, let me suggest this, because your point's are, like, and you're right, we had that aberration that one that one session. If you wanted to introduce on the floor um, legislation that made it the majority leader and the minority leader in both chambers versus the Senate pro tem and the minority leader, if you wanted to do majority leader, minority leader, I have no problem with that. Mr. Speaker, M Representative Miller, we did go up to LRB for an amendment for you to clarify that it would be 
president pro tem would pick a member of the majority party and the speaker of the house would pick a member of the majority party so that would address your concerns there so there is an amendment at lrb for you already e either approach I'm, I'm i'd be fine with if you wanted to do it majority leader minority leader i in fact in some ways that's perfectly fine it, it's not about me having the appointees if you want to make sure that that's that there's both parties represented i'm fine with that yeah i i do just want to reiterate i think it's important that there be representation from both yeah sides. it's a great point it's Thank a you. very fair point representative brooks Two. Uh, yes. How, how are they planning to finance that? Uh, and would would we automatically because? No, not automatically, uh, Representative Brooks. No, it, th uh, they're they're going to take it. To, they'll bond it. You know, they'll they'll do uh, they'll do an in, it, it, they'll, they'll incur indebtedness right to the to the tune of one point two billion dollars. And would there be any review or oversight of that bonding by uh, by the state? Not right now. Would they would they give they would look at it Robert oh you mean it's one of the bills that okay so right now that's not the case but but the, your committee moved a bill to that effect that was correct. House Bill 882 last week so I did not know that but thanks for pointing it out <laughs> that would give us the most we're hard at work in this committee yes you are <laughs> yes you are Representative Hambridge Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> How are you? You've got it. <laughs> thank you for your very clear um, sort of share of your concerns with respect to the financing of this issue. Um, I, I'm, I have some concerns with respect to setting a precedent of sort of larger government going in and dealing with local governmental issues, wherein we, they're getting state money. And I was wondering if there was any consideration of putting any sort of litmus test with respect to how much funding would trigger this sort of oversight. <laughs> Well, I mean, this one is particular to this particular authority. Um, but I think if you wanted to look across the board, whether or not we should be getting into... Well, it sets an interesting precedent. But Well, we already, we do have the precedent. Yeah. We, we, we know with SEPTA. We have it with SEPTA. We have it with the Port Authority. They, they have different... Um, you'd, you'd have to... And let's just take the Water and Sewage Authority in Pittsburgh. Um, myself and Harry Reedshaw, Representative Reedshaw, um, did a bill to put them under public utility uh, jurisdiction. That passed unanimously in both chambers. And uh, th that was a model that was geared towards, you know, a, a water and sewage authority that couldn't account for 50% of the water that it was going out in terms of billings and was over a billion dollars in debt. Um, and... Uh, I, I just sometimes think that the circumstances demand or cry out for, maybe demand's not the right verb, but cry out for some level of oversight with respect to the money that's flowing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in here, you have both capital and operating dollars, and that's not true with respect to, the operating dollars is not true with respect to any other airport. And where in this tri this mechanism is triggered, do you foresee any instances where you would scale back? W when things are running well and you have less concern, would you scale back this process? I think when you would do that is governmental oversight. The twelve point four million does does not have an end date. It's ad infinitum until this body says, "Guess what? You're not getting the in the governor." I mean, the governor would have to sign it. I don't mean this governor, but any governor until. You said, no, there's not going to be any more operating money. Yeah, certainly, if you stop the operating money, then there's a case for why should you have state oversight, okay, right? So it's sort of the cost of doing business Correct. with the state is that, that we're going to step in and we're going to do oversight over local government concerns. Well, we're not a majority, remember. You would have five, and I'm sure not all five necessarily, depending on the issue, would always agree, but... I, I think more often than not, you would with fiscal concerns. I, I think that the five individuals do not make up a majority. They make up a minority. The county executive would still have eight, of eight members out of a 13-person board. Um, let's presume that the five could always agree, depending on how the review of the fiscal issues are. You still couldn't stop it. But what you can do is you could shine a light on it. And I think what happens is, is when you have that system of checks and balances, it makes everybody more transparent. 
and everybody more accountable. Every time. There's not even a question in my mind. Do I think that the Port Authority to date still has room for improvement? I, I do. Do I think that the Port Authority has significantly improved since the 2013 legislation? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, Representative Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Speaker, thanks for the eloquent explanation. Um, just one question. Do the board members, the authority, receive compensation in this case? No. no. Um, do they receive any compensation, the board members? What, what, what the do you Municipal mean? Authorities Act authorizes the board, the authority board, to receive compensation. Currently, the legislation, since it does just amend the Authorities Act, will carry over the compensation language. There has been, I have been approached by at least one member to change that, to amend that section as well already. But, but Representative Gardner, you're saying that that's uh, not, not uh, Rob. I apologize. <laughs> but you're saying that uh, and, and Rob's, <laughs> Rob, Rob's, Rob's parents. Here's what really worries me about what I just I'm said. His, he li I'm his, not his, for his mom seat. and dad live in my district. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but, but, uh, Mr. Gardner, it's already in the existing law, not in this. This bill references the current law. Since this bill amends the Authorities Act, there is a cross-reference to the appropriate section of the Authority Act, Authorities Act where compensation is already authorized. So it's and, a, and that's a already in current law. That's already in current law. Representative Sanchez. But, but we're not sure, but they don't receive compensation, though, although I, authorized. Do the, I, my, I don't know if they, I, honestly, I, I don't believe they have to receive any compensation. We, we looked this morning, we haven't been able to find that. I, I don't think so. Represent, I've never seen any, we've looked at the financials, we haven't seen any money going into to compensation. Thank you. Representative Theriti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I've, sir. Um, I, I hear what you're saying about the monies. When we give state money, we definitely should have uh, a lot more oversight. I mean, I wonder how many other organizations throughout the state that we've given this type of money to. Um, and as we all know, who are sitting in this room, we're faced with a possible bill to give the nuclear industry $500 million. Um, so I would hope that my colleagues in this room who hear this would think about how, how we give that $500 million away without state oversight on that. Um, bill, but that's not the point. The point although, although, just as an aside, I, I do get your point and in, in how you're, you know, the relevance of it. I, I, I'm not any expert on when they did TARP or when they did the GM, but there were, I believe, I believe there were some string. I'm going to use strings in a colloquial sense. There, there was some level of oversight with respect to that significant expenditure. Of federal money on those projects, and um, the analogy holds. My only question to you is similar to Representative Hambridge: is that the whole idea of how many other organizations throughout the state would fall into the category that you're presenting, and really should we, and excuse what I'm going to say, pigeonhole one organization or look for a much broader bill that would say at the threshold numbers across the state, this would be the plan. Here's, here's, I don't, I, I, I can only tell you, I, I live in Allegheny County, <clears throat> lived there all my life. From a regional perspective, I would invite everybody to kick the tires in their particular districts or in their regions. There are two primary um, metropolitan, like really, I'm, I'm not saying that Erie's not a significant town or Scranton or Allentown or um, Harrisburg, the capital here. But, but Philadelphia and Pittsburgh are the two metropolitan areas. That's where they are. And, um, and my understanding on Philadelphia, you know, it's not, there's not an authority. It's, it's the city. It's a, it's a department under the city itself, the authority for, the, you know, the Philadelphia International Airport. In, in our area, it's actually an authority. And, and no other airport and anybody want to correct me if i'm wrong we've kicked the tires all over you can correct me i'm but, but we've we've checked the tires on all of them only the greater pittsburgh airport the pits the, the allegheny county airport authority is receiving 
an annual subsidy based on the gaming legislation of 2017. 12.4 million. Put aside like the capital request. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We're going to move on with amendments. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna uh, excuse you. myself if that's okay. Thank that's you very much. Perfectly and, fine. Uh, Representative Gardner, don't be taking my seat yet. <laughs> I said it again, just my so the hat's done ready with retire. you. He's first. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Appreciate it. Now, I'd like to uh, make a motion myself and ask for a second to call up my amendment, uh, A00793. Myself and Representative Freeman, or Chairman Freeman. Um, and I'll ask Rob to explain it quickly. Uh, in the expense of time, the speaker covered 90% of it. It removes the provisions that would allow the minority members or members of the minority party to remove table certain motions. So that is a amendment that both parties seem interested in having done. Any questions? Uh, just a comment, Mr. Chairman. It's a good amendment. I think it improves the bill, and I urge yes vote. Thank you. Are there any negative votes? Seeing none. The amendment passes. Next, I need a motion and a second to call up Representative Freeman's bill or, uh, amendment A00797. Hembridge and pick one. Kim? All right. And John, will you explain it? Okay, 797. It clarifies uh, there's terminology in the bill uh, relating to uh, term limitation uh, that it would only apply for board members uh, appointed after the effective date of the act. Any questions? Are there any negative votes? Seeing none, the amendment passes. Next is Representative Freeman's Amendment 00794. Uh, need a uh, Motion and a second to call up the amendment. Seren and uh, Sorisi. John, will you explain the yeah, amendment? Please? 794 uh, reduces the requirement from eight members of the board to seven members of the board to act on uh, any, take any action. Uh, so it basically puts in a simple majority for them to take action. Chairman Freeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we, we felt it was appropriate that we just require a majority vote. That's how most authorities operate, the majority vote of the members. So instead of having an extra majority of, of eight, this would be a simple majority of seven and an urge yes vote. Thank you, Chairman Freeman. Um, are there any questions? Any negative votes? Seeing none, amendment passes. Uh, zero, amendment 00797 was identical to my, or 95, I'm sorry. We're withdrawing. <laughs> and, and we're withdrawing that. Uh, Chairman Freeman's withdrawing his amendment. Uh, last, I'd like to call up Chairman Freeman's amendment uh, A00796. Uh, need a, a motion and a second on it. Eric, and somebody give me a second. And Chairman Freeman. Uh, John, would you explain the amendment? Sure. Uh, 796 provides that members of the board appointed by the governor and the legislative leaders will serve at their pleasure and may be removed with or without cause. Chairman Freeman, any, any more on the amendment? Are there any other questions? Representative James? Just real quick. Uh, I look at that and I wondered under what circumstances we would actually need that amendment at all. Uh, as as an appointee, you serve at the pleasure of the, the group or the person appointing you and could be removed with or without this. It, you raise a good point that usually that is the case, but it's not specific in the bill. So we've mirrored language that were in other bills to affect the same position. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Are there any negative votes? Seeing none, the amendment passes. Uh, are there any more questions to House Bill 1074 as amended? Seeing none, I know that we're going to need a roll call vote. So Ashton, if you would take the roll and I'll just add one thing on my behalf is I don't think it's a bad idea when taxpayer dollars are used to fund something to have people from the state, the, the government, the legislative body at least having eyes on the issues. 
So I would encourage a, a, a vote in the affirmative on this bill. Um, Ashton, would you please call the roll on the vote? Here, yes. Thank you. I just want to make the statement that uh, I believe oversight's important. I think the fact that we now do, will have this ability to review the finances and the financial conditions makes me feel better that it doesn't have to be a, uh, a board with both political and local. So I'm going to vote no. <clears throat> Yes. Huntling? Dylan? Yes. Chairman Freeman? No. Representative Salisi? Yes. Representative Kendage? Yes. 11. No. Kim? Lee? Malgari? No. Mursky? No. Sanchez? No. Chappie? Thirteen to eleven. Sounds like we have a bill headed to the floor. It will be reported as such. This meeting is now adjourned.